Hi, uh, my name's James, and today we're going to look at D flip flops, uh, digital counters, and Proteus 8. You can get a demo version of this online. First thing to do is click the new project uh, icon, type in a name, press next. Uh, we want a schematic to create our circuit. It's already on default, so then you just keep clicking next because we don't want PCBs and we don't want firmware projects now there's different tabs this is the devices tabs so you click the off amp, you double click and then you type the device you want you put a 7474 flip flop uh, the HC is the one that I'm going to use uh, I've typed LED active to get some animated LEDs and you click OK. That's components mode. Junction dot mode. There's various ones. The most important I'd say is devices and then terminals. Well they're two of the most important. Terminals gives you powers and grounds like motor volts and power with five volts. And for our digital counter, we're going to use a square wave clock generator. So that's called D clock. You just click on it and place one. Then under devices mode, click on your flip flop. Every second time that you click on the schematic, it places the item. And you can lasso around objects and move them. You can do different things with the zoom. You can use the zoom window in the top left. But when you've got it to where you want it, you have to left click again, otherwise it will keep moving with your mouse. You'll soon find that out. To wire things up, you just hover over the end of them until there's a little red square, which means you can wire. There you can see the red, and then the other end goes red. What you cannot do is just move components together. They will not be electrically connected unless you put a wire between them. It's really important. Otherwise they'd look like they're connected, but they wouldn't be. You double click the clock to change the properties. You can change it any frequency really. I'm going to put um, uh, 0.2 hertz because it's quite slow just to show what a flip-flop does so on the rising edge of the clock signal on pin 3 the flip-flop looks at what's on the D input pin 2 and puts it at the Q output pin 5 so every rising edge on the clock it transfers the logic state from the input to the output that's all it ever does so that was very unremarkable because we had nothing on the input. So now I'm putting a power. Really, I should have double clicked it and put plus 5 volts, but it defaults to that anyway. So I have 5 volts on the D input. And when there's a rising edge, it clocks that through. It latches the D to the Q. But every rising edge clock here is going to do the same thing. So that LED would stay on forever now. So, we need to make it a little bit more interesting. We're going to get a ground, click devices mode, double click the white area underneath the word devices, and then type button, it'll give you a little button switch. And you can move things once they're wired to make the wiring uh, look better. You can lasso around things and move them as a group to get them where you want. What we're going to do now, we've got an active low set and reset on this chip, which means the asynchronous set and reset occurs when you put zero volts.
so whenever you click and make the what we call not reset whenever you pull that low it will reset the flip-flop and when a flip-flop is reset its Q goes low so reset means make its Q output go low and it's asynchronous it has ultimate power over the flip-flop it's not nothing to do with the uh, clock input don't forget to keep saving your work as you go along what we can do is lasso something right click it and copy to clipboard zoom out right click and paste from clipboard and you have another version of your circuit if you're doing different versions or adding up you know adding to your circuit you may as well do that just copy and then you click on the zoom to area and it will do just that what I'm going to do now is feed the not Q output which is the opposite logic value to Q I'm going to feed that back into the data input the D input and then the flip-flop behaves like a, a toggle with the output going high and low and it changes every time a rising edge comes on the clock input and it changes because the output is the opposite value of the not Q output and it's the not Q that's fed back into the input so it toggles if the Q was fed back in the state would never change and of course there's our asynchronous reset which makes the Q output go low and even if we hold it low nothing ever happens because that has the control over the flip-flop it's an asynchronous set or reset active low and you can tell it's active low by the little circles by R and S you can right click anything and there's different properties for instance rotate clockwise like I did there copy a clipboard right click and paste from clipboard it doesn't work when you do control and C and control and V just so you know you can right click wires edit the style to change the colour and the thickness to make them easier to see in certain branches it takes a while sometimes and you can also place wire labels I'll show you that in a minute make that one blue for the reset if you double right click anything it deletes it so here I've taken away the clock just to show the effect that set and reset have on the flip-flop itself. I've placed a wire label. It comes in handy so you can see what your wires are for important ones. You can then drag things and move them. And reconnect the clock to quite a slow clock for this purpose so we can see what's happening so it's toggling the output every time a rising edge comes in on the clock but set always makes the queue go high and reset always makes the queue output go low regardless of what else is going on they are asynchronous the set and reset and not controlled by the clock input lasso this whole circuit right click copy to clipboard zoom up so I know where to put it right click and paste from clipboard and then select zoom to area select the area I want to zoom in on you can use your mouse scroll wheel as well to do this just want to get rid of that so I lasso it and either press delete or you can right click it twice and it deletes it I'll move the LED out of the way because I've made a one bit counter it counts to one then resets which is of limited use although it does act as a latch you can keep 
particular value. It's a one a one bit memory stick, if you like. And we've got another one. So this is a two bit memory device now. And the way that you um, connect them dictates what type of capacitor that you're going to get. Because I've put the Q output to the clock of the next flip flop, it's going to be a ripple counter because their clocks are not controlled at the same time. It's asynchronous. And you'll find that this counter counts down instead of up. If you want it to count up, you'd use the not Q output from the first flip flop to the clock of the second. And now you see the LEDs going on, but we've got a bit of a problem. It's taking too much juice out of the first flip flop so that the second flip flop never gets clocked, as indicated by the grey square. A blue square means it's logic zero, a red square means it's logic one, grey gray means it's pretty much open circuit, and a yellow square means a conflict of logic levels. And I've got a little current limiting resistor in here to make sure not too much current flows. So there's enough left for the second flip flop to keep the voltage at what it wants to be, which is a, a good logic one around 5 volts. If I right click that resistor and rotated it clockwise, now I'm going to, right, I've double clicked my value and changed it to a 220 ohm. And when you click play in the bottom left, the count is now 3, then it's 2, then it's 1, and 0 again. So 3, then 2, then 1, and 0. So that's a 2-bit binary down counter, and it's a ripple counter. And if you press pause and then keep... Uh, tapping on the play button you can see the simulation occurring a lot more slowly What I did there, I, I cut it out of the video, I just copied and pasted again to make a 3-bit counter. So that's 7, that's 6, that's 5, which is 4 and 1, that's 4 on its own, that's 1 and 2 is 3, that's 2 and 1. So that's 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, and down to 0. I'm gonna, I'm gonna speed the clock up a little bit to you can put a thousand for a thousand hertz or one K or one KHZ for a kilohertz. And when you simulate that, it's much too fast. I got an oscilloscope from meter mode. And get rid of the LEDs, you can double right click to get rid of them or lasso them and press delete. I'm going to put the clock input into channel A, so we want to see what we're putting in all the time, and then you look at what you're getting out on other channels. That's a four channel oscilloscope. Try and make the wiring look uh, as neat as possible because it makes it easier later on with more complicated circuits. So that's a second output of two, and channel D is going to have the third flip-flop's output. Change the frequency of this cop 
feed circuit to a kilohertz. And when you simulate, the oscilloscope should pop up, but if it doesn't, go to debug and then digital oscilloscope to invoke it again. Turn off auto because there's really not a very useful set in that auto setting. I'm changing the time base of the oscilloscope. You can change the horizontal position, change the volts per division on each channel, make it the same, otherwise it's not really a fair comparison. So I'm putting each at two volts per square or two volts per division. So channel A is the clock is in yellow. QA, the output of A is blue. QB, the output of the flip-flop B is in pinky red colour. And the final output, QC, is in green. So a digital counter, at every stage it divides the frequency input in by two. And it's also counting down in binary from seven to zero. to say that was a quick introduction to flip-flops, a very whistle-stop tour on using Proteus to make uh, digital counters.